Hello, Mary. Hi, Katie. It's lovely to see you again. It's good to see you. And welcome, everybody, to another episode of um, Katie and Mary Presents. Um, I'm a British songwriter with Polish roots, and I've made my recent trilogy of albums have been about the Polish Second World War experience, that's Pashport, Polonia, and Providence. And, um, and I'll let Mary introduce herself. And <clears throat> I'm a filmmaker, independent filmmaker here in New York. And <clears throat> my biggest film was about Irena Sendler, who's behind me, the Polish heroine who uh, organized the rescue of hundreds of Jewish children from the Warsaw Ghetto during World War II. And I had the great good fortune to spend time with her before she died. And my film was a national PBS broadcast here in the US, so it reached millions of uh, viewers beginning in 2011. And since then, it's been shown all over the world at festivals and on t television and uh, generated a lot of other new projects that I'm working on. So my interest in Poland stems from the fact that my mother was Polish and my grandmother was Polish, she died during the war, but I've always been interested in learning more about Poland. And uh, I learn a lot from Katie because she knows uh, she's a fountain of uh, knowledge about everything Polish. Yes, it's uh, if you have Polish blood, it runs really <laughs> strongly in your in your veins. And um, so it's it's wonderful. And we're meeting on Zoom every week uh, to talk about topics that we're very passionate about, uh, especially in terms of the current situation, um, the, the war in Ukraine. We're trying to make links and have a discussion forum here. Now, what we what are we doing today, Mary? Well, uh, someone told me that today we're going to focus almost the entire program on bears. Yes, because bears um, are very important yeah. to Poland. Yes, um, and in particular one, <laughs> yeah. one bear. Actually, it was a corporal. He was a soldier, soldier bear, and um, his name begins with a W. It's a V actually in Polish. W in the Polish alphabet is a V in the English alphabet. And he's spelled W O J T E K, which is Mary. Wojtek. <laughs> Wojtek, yes. There. Yes, Wojtek meaning the word for warrior. And um, what a wonderful story this is. Um, in 2012, um, I released an album, whoops, just get it, it just fell on the floor, Pashport, Pashport, and this was inspired, obviously, by the effects of the molotov ribbentrop Agreement, and pe Polish people who had lost their right to have a Polish passport during the Second World War, and post the Second World War. And um, one of the songs that I was, uh, that I had written, had been a very, at that point, a very untold story. And I discovered this story in the Polish Institute in the Sikorsky Museum. There's a tiny little picture of a bear um, with soldiers. And I went to a little exhibition and I was absolutely dumbfounded. I knew that I was going to go to this exhibition. I had read a little bit about it in a tiny little bulletin somewhere. And as I was biking, I was biking with my ukulele over Hyde Park because I used to live in Marylebone, central London. I came up with this song in my head. So when I got to the exhibition, I whipped my ukulele out and I sang it to everybody <laughs> as a debut and it stayed and it came onto the album. Now, the Institute, the Polish Institute and Sikorsky Museum is in Kensington and it's where General Anders' desk is and there's also a massive statue a bronze statue of Wojtek. So who was General Anders, Katie? Tell us who General Anders was. Well, General Anders was a very <laughs> important general during the Second World War, and he was the commander, the general of the Second Polish Army, the Polish Two Corps, um, uh, that was fighting outside the terrain of Poland. And um, part of that terrain was in Italy. There were lots of other terrains, weren't there, um, Mary? 
Definitely. Uh, uh, they, they, they fought very, very heroically in Italy and uh, helped to take Monte Cassino alongside the Allies. Uh, but uh, General Anders, uh, the, this army was formed uh, from uh, the young men who had been imprisoned in, this, in the Gulag when the Russians invaded uh, in 1939. And uh, they had made their way uh, in 1941 from Siberia. Uh, and many of them assembled in Italy where um, General Anders led them. He was very well uh, known and well, well loved to Poles who were living in exile at that point. This is during World War II and after World War II. And uh, my mother spoke a lot about him because uh, in her journey, we talked something about this journey in an earlier episode, uh, after she was liberated from a concentration camp, she ended up trekking with other refugees uh, to Italy and there uh, were members of this Polish Second Corps who were fighting to win the country back, basically. They still believed they would win the country back, even after the Soviets took over. Because they were outside the country, they, they, they uh, you know, they continued to ex do their exercises and to fight. And a group of those uh, soldiers uh, learned that there were some Polish refugees, women who were staying in a convent and that they couldn't go back to Poland because their families were from patriotic families and they would have gone directly into Russian camps. My mother was one of them. And uh, the at the time, uh, all refugees were being told to go back to their countries of origin. She knew she couldn't. And there was uh, one of the volunteers who went to the Polish army and said, we have these poor girls and the only way uh, that they're going to survive is if they can go to England. But the only people at that time that were allowed to go to England were the families of these soldiers and their fiancés. And so a group of these soldiers agreed without ever having met any of these girls to vouch that they were their fiancés and they gave them passage to uh, London and basically saved my mother's life. So she was in a DP camp in London where General Anders visited. She never forgot that. Wow. And, and he made a massive impression on people that he, visit, that he visited. And so many people have such incredible memories of General Anders. He was very um, tall and very good looking and in great shape and very gregarious. That's just, this is what my mother said. And, uh, you know, he just made a powerful impression on her. Yes. And, um, you know, because a lot of people don't know about the Soviet invasion of Poland that happened on 17th of September 1939. And the 1st of September 1939, obviously, the German invasion kick started the Second World War. But the, the effects for the Poles were just horrific. And you're absolutely right. You know, these people who were in the Polish Two Corps had survived. But what was Auschwitz in the Siberia, Gulag. Exactly. We can't actually be less descriptive about that. These Gulags were the most horrific concentration camps in Siberia, where nature was your prison. And Stalin would would say to people, "You are going on a holiday." I don't know how this could possibly be a holiday. The Gulags, um, many millions um, were murdered there. I think I think 400 million, including many many Russians, uh, across the whole of the Soviet Union, were murdered there. You know, and this spans 200 years. Even there are roads made out of human bones in Russia. The, the incredible amounts of human um, torture and murder in these horror, um, horrific um, human. Yeah. And there are, there are many descendants of those uh, uh, families who were deported to that, <clears throat> to those camps, living in the United States and living in the UK, but still this history is very, uh, remains unknown. Very few people actually know, even know that 
Russia also invaded Poland. They think Poland was invaded by the Germans, but they uh, don't know this piece of history, partly because during the Cold War, it was suppressed. It was yeah. written out of all the history books in in Poland. Yeah. That's the one thing, and very little of that information reached yeah. outside or, or was of much interest to people outside of oh. Poland. I mean, you know, like with my grandfather, he was he was prisoner, Auschwitz prisoner 22661. I can go to the concentration camp museum of Auschwitz and I can grieve for my grandfather there. But with the gulags, there isn't any really central museum for the gulags. Um, luckily, um, th there are many Holocaust museums all the way around the world. But unfortunately for those families who have lost um, their relatives who were tortured and murdered in the gulags, there is very little places, there are very few places that people can go to and to grieve the loss of their families. And that is, that is, a, horrific, um, that is a horrific state of affairs. But there are historians who are now handling and facing and sharing this totalitarian murder on a mass scale. We're talking about, as I said, 400 million people who were murdered there. This isn't a, sh this isn't a small amount of people and certainly not something that we can ignore um, on a mass scale like that. And the effect no, it's very important as a backdrop to what's going on in Ukraine right now, exactly. uh, because uh, this is where the sensitivity is to the to a to a russian invader yeah and the russian aggressor mm -hmm. who is apparently giving amnesty again we have this word amnesty but it is an absolute farce because which ukrainian person would want to go and live in russia i can't think of men and those people who have been kidnapped from their homes are being sent right now as we speak to be slaves in the gulag system in russia right now in 2022 there have been many people that have survived these gulags um, and they do write about uh, how the life is in a gulag it is horror there it is it is torture and murder and horror starvation and very few people manage to come out unscarred and unwounded. But this is a collective trauma that Central Europe has faced on a, a, a very long, <laughs> long history of Russian aggression, stealing and kidnapping huge amounts of people, huge numbers of people, millions and millions of people. This is a great, this is a gross slave trade. Um, there is no other word for it. It is um, uh, kidnapping, stealing, thieving of people. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a human slave trade, and it's still continuing today. And now the, the latest slaves are the poor, innocent Ukrainians. All right. So just to give for my friends in the United States to give you a sense of um, the scale of this uh, during World War II. Um, two million people were deported to uh, these Polish gulags. People. Polish people, yeah. Polish people. Alone. Yeah. 650,000 of them were Jews, and they were deported not because they were Jewish. They were deported because they were cosmopolitans and considered to be a threat to the new, to the communist system. So uh, if, you, if you can imagine a country the size of California, just imagine two million people disappearing. Mm. And, and it's really difficult for Polish people of Polish descent to explain this because mm -hmm. the um, lack of and the rewriting of history by Stalin and his cronies, you know, and his Cold War cronies over 50 years of the Cold War has it's, it's like stunted the, um, the, the whole topic of this and we saw it with the Katyn massacre we, we are seeing a repeat of the same language being used in Stalin's era um, for instance the Katyn massacre where 25,000 Polish officers were murdered and were supposed to be protected by the Geneva Convention as they were allies allied soldiers um, it, the, the, the Stalin's um, administration for over 40 years 
promoted that the fascists, the Nazis, had murdered them. But now we know that the Soviets did, made the same ritualistic killing and as they are doing right now in Ukraine. And so, therefore, um, it is a repeat. And we are seeing a lot of repeats from the Russian aggressors right now in Ukraine, as we saw in the Second World War in Poland under the Katyn massacre of 1940, which was an absolute horror. And across the university network in America specifically and the UK, it was forbidden to even write about the Katyn massacre for, oh, throughout the 50s and 60s and 70s for fear of upsetting Stalin. Here in the Second World, after the Second World War, there was a victory parade and there was a new Labour government post Second World War, a socialist government that would not allow the Polish soldiers to march alongside all the other soldiers, which was an absolute farce because, as I mentioned in a previous video, Poland had been the third largest allied military coalition force at the end of the Second World War. So it was a lot of horror and rewriting of history. And this is why um, I think it's very important to vocalise this and historians are dealing with that and they are writing about this now. And when Katie speaks about the Katyn massacre, we talked about this in another programme, but just very briefly, um, these were the uh, leading top officers of the Polish army who had been captured by the Russians when they invaded in 1939. They had been interred in the Gulag and the Russians summarily shot them one by one in the back of the head, 20, 30,000 of them, and buried them in the Katyn forest and then blamed the crime on the Germans for decades, for decades. So that's the uh, that's what Katie's talking about. But tell us, Katie, how the bear became a general. <laughs> and oh, well, the well it's, it's, because of this, in 1941, there was a supposed amnesty. But as I spoke in, in, in previous um, not a good word it's right. not a good word to use because it certainly stalin was not interested in giving any human being an amnesty because he was a psychopath and a mass murderer so he was very reluctant to let his polish slaves out of the gulags but um those polish slaves who did find um a chance to the have the information because that I, I have met people who who remained in Siberia who were never given information as Polish communities that they were allowed to leave and their descendants still live in Siberia. Um, those Polish people that had a chance to have some money, I don't know how they managed to have some money, but they obviously found the money for a train fare and somehow as a starving prisoner full of lies and no clothes and you know very 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 humble modest clothes because you know they <laughs> just wear whatever they had as as prisoners managed to take a train of over for over may sometimes three months to get to even Persia or wherever the British British troops were and on the way they would maybe part walk the way part use train um and 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 here is where the story of our Wojtek comes in because a few of these polish soldiers a few of these siberian survivors and polish soldiers were making their way through iran and they found um they they saw a young lad boy i think he was about six years old he had something in a bag and um, they looked inside the bag and there was this little bear cub and their hearts absolutely went, melted when they saw this bear cub. And the story, as far as I understand, is that the, the, the Polish soldiers bartered with the boy who was hungry and starving. He was a, was a tiny little boy. And they gave him a, a few cans of, I think it was spam or something, some sort of meat or something, with some bars of chocolate. And they had this bear cub. And they took the bear cub in and 
it was a sh it was a shock to everybody because they went what's going to happen when she gro when he grows up what's going to happen but immediately the soldiers were like no 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 we, we've got to keep it he is our he is his ours and they were the soldiers of the 22nd artillery supply company polish two corps and um in order to keep the bear fed they had to make him into a corporal so he could have three rations of food a day ah. and, um, they mm. didn't they didn't chain him up at all they allowed him to go through the camp but one day he was a very naughty bear he would eat all the <laughs> parts he would still he would do what bears do they steal honey as like a baby and um one day uh the soldiers in the british uh, when when obviously they arrived in the, in the camp, the British camp, and the, Brit the British soldiers had to wash them, they had to de-louse them, they had to burn their old clothes, they had to feed the prisoners, you know, to make them into soldiers, because you can't just have starving prisoners in the British army. Um, they had to, 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 to give them food, they had to, you know, literally build up this Polish army from, from the, the, the starving prisoners, so it took at least three months to get food into them some people didn't make it even at that point but one day little Wojtek the bear decided they had these showers and they and they they had like string that with a little bit of water to have showers for the soldiers and one day little Wojtek was ro strolling around at 4 a.m or something <laughs> and just pulled all the strings of every single shower so none of the soldiers could have a shower <laughs> which case they thought well uh you know this little bear is wandering around making mischief so they they did have to put a little chain on him to make sure that he didn't stroll around or lose him you know or be stolen or whatever so um yes but he used to sleep with the soldiers in the beds he used to travel with them in tanks and and in the in the, in the jeeps and everything so it, it was a wonderful yeah he, he was he was in and out and playing with the soldiers they had so much fun with him they and there's quite a few pictures of him and yeah. and some monuments too aren't there uh, yeah you can you can find them on the internet um mm -hmm. and um yeah he, he he was he was he's was greatly loved and i have uh, professor naremsky he was still alive in krakow he is 95 years old he was with Wojtek. he was actually called little Wojtek, uh because he's very small there's obviously, you know, having spent time in Siberia, not having enough food in his belly, he became, he, he still was a very young man. And um, he, he stayed that height. Um, um, but he was known as Little Wojtek and Big Wojtek. So he told me that the bear used to drink beer and he used to uh, smoke cigarettes, although he ate the cigarettes. And that, that's <laughs> kind of... <laughs> so there were lots of mascots. Uh, animal mascots, live animals actually, throughout the Second World War. I know the RAF had um, dogs. Um, yeah, I was given I was given a dog actually. I'll show you a little dog uh, mascot that was from actually in from from my friend Lewis at the Royal Air Force Museum here. Oh, yeah. I think he was yeah. a little mascot of the Royal Air Force. Wow. Um, but Wojtek, yes, he was. Uh, there was also a bear, a brown bear in the. Um, a brown, there was Wojtek the brown bear, but there was also a white bear called Basha. But she came to an unfortunate end at the Second World War. She was tame, but she was walking. She was she was running to some people, but they were scared and they shot her by accident. Wow. But you know there were lots and lots of mascots that the soldiers used to to have there. They were little dogs, there was Labradors. I mean, I know lots of soldiers all over, I suppose, in America, they also had, like, mascots everywhere, didn't they? Yeah. Anymore. And yes. so you, this song about, you're going to sing a song about yeah. Voidrek, but it came to you sort of magically, didn't it? Mm. You, you were just, you heard the story and... Yeah, I was literally biking over Hyde Park and it came to me and I was going to this little tiny exhibition um, in the Polish Institute, the Chikorsky Museum, and I, 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 I came up with this song, you know, and it was on this album, Pashbot, so um, my designer here in London, although she's from Seattle in America, actually, Susan, she designed Wojtek 
with. Oh, love it, love it. Yeah, so, so he's got his Polish two court. So he did have a kind of a smiley yeah. face. I've seen pictures of him. Uh -huh. He he yeah. actually walked as well, so he's like a he's really like a happy bear. Yeah. Yeah, and there that in England we've actually got a video that's <laughs> Wojtek and you can see he actually helped the soldiers lift crates of ammunition in the Battle of Monte Cassino and wow. there is the emblem of the Polish um, two corps so Susan's done a beautiful job drawing him there so yeah so I came up with this song it's in actually it's in English and it's in Polish um there you go you can have like two the different writing there um yes and i'm going to um sing it now wonderful you can sing actually if you like you know, if you want to at home or wherever because there's only one word in the in the it's one song. of those songs that everyone likes to join in on yeah it's like you know you can everyone who's in the car or whoever's listening to this anywhere you can join in there's only one word, it's a Polish word, a boy tag in the, in the chorus, but you're more than welcome to. And this song is actually, I've been singing it to so many different communities. Um, I even sang it to Syrian school children, they loved it at one the point. Kids go crazy yeah. over this song and the story of the bear. And it's just, it, there you can see on Katie's site some videos of her with the children. Yeah. And it's just amazing the way they um, spark to this story and they want to know more about um, this history and it just awakens their curiosity and they just love that bear story. We also yeah. have done an amazing video as well with Wojtek in it. So if you, you just click on YouTube, you can see the video with lots of Polish flags and Polish cake and it's in the middle of the summer. Um, yes. Wojtek Wojtek, Wojtek, have you come to save my day? The road is along and the river is so deep. With Wojtek, my love, my love remains. Wojtek, Have you come to save my day? Help me find my way back to Poland. I'm thousands of miles and thousands of miles from home. Help me find my way back to Poland. I'm thousands miles and thousands of miles from home. Right, this is the bit um, where I'm singing let's raise one, two, three for the good health of Wojtek the Bear. Wypijemy jednego, drugiego, trzeciego, za zdrowie naszego, niedźwiedzia, pijącego, palącego, walczącego, żołnierza naszego. Miedźwiedzia, Wojtka, Wojtek, 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 have you come to save my day? Have you come to save my day? Have you come to save my day? I love it. And now you won't be able to get that song out of your head, everyone. It's going to be ringing in your ears once you hear it. It, you, it starts to come while you're cooking your dinner and uh, you're doing your errands. You'll see. Yes. And, you know, at the end of the Second World War, Wojtek ended up with the Polish soldiers actually in exile in Scotland. 
And mm. I think the first, the first feet, his feet hit Scottish soil in first place. It actually was in Glasgow, but he ended up um, stationed with the Polish soldiers. End of his life, um, he was in Edinburgh Zoo. He was unable to return to, with the soldiers to Poland because of the Western betrayal of Poland, which was connected with the Yalta Conference, where the borders of Poland had been redrawn by the big three, Roosevelt, Stalin and Churchill. They had met in Yalta, February 1945, redrawn um, the map of Europe so that Stalin could um, steal basic theft. Um, hundreds of, of, of kilometers of land um, to to and his his cold war cold war iron curtain could be could be um, uh, initiated so poor Wojtek um, ended up in Edinburgh Zoo he wasn't able to live with the civilians because in civilian life you can't have a big bear living in civilian life it's just impossible Right. Um, that's so tragic. It's so tragic for a tame bear to have to live on his own in a, in a compound in Edinburgh Zoo. But he remained tame, and the soldiers did go to see him, and even they would whistle at him. They, he would remember them, and he would they would play with him. They, they had special access to him, so he was looked after by the Scottish Zoo. But it was the only place, unfortunately, that he could live in civilian life. But he is a symbol now to Poland as, as, as a chance to remember why uh, so many, so many soldiers were unable and their families were, and, and people were exiled all over the globe as in America. Huge um, Polish communities uh, began as your mum is an exile, she couldn't go back to uh, Poland post Second World War, and um, yeah, so it's, it's it's a story of refugee status, exile. Um, it encompasses so many different facets uh, that we are talking about in this series. Katie and Mary presents, and it makes us think of another bear that yeah. we talked to. <laughs> in Utah. Well, yes, <laughs> yeah. he's got a yellow hat. This bear. Um, yes, and he's, yeah. he's, he's wearing his Polish badges today, his yeah. I Love Poland, yeah. because we've been talking about Monte Cassino yeah. and about Wojtek and those brave, brave soldiers uh, of the Second Corps during World War II. And so he's decided to honor them, but he's, his heart remains with the plight of the Ukrainian refugees, and he thinks about them every day. And I saw him wandering around Hampstead Heath just now, some pictures of him mm -hmm. saying his prayers and carrying his little notes that remind our friends and family in Ukraine that we love them and we're thinking of them and we're sending them big bear hugs. Yes, we stand with Ukraine. This badge actually is from the Ukraine Social Club. Anybody wants to go and support them in Holland Park in London, they can go and they can buy their badges. Paddington always wears his Wellington boots here in Britain because you never know what the weather's like. And they are red, <laughs> symbolising, I think, his red Polish boots. <laughs> right. But he is a refugee too, and um, we and he, he misses his brother Wojtek, don't you, Paddington? You know. The reason why we, we mention Paddington in this series is because our wonderful President Zelensky of Ukraine is doing such a fantastic job. But, Mary, why have we got Paddington here? Because our wonderful President Zelensky was the voice of Paddington in a former life on the program that aired in the Ukraine. So whenever we see our friend Paddington, we think of that wonderful leader yes. and we send our, our yes. love and our prayers. Yes, and we send everybody in Ukraine our love and prayers and 
there's so much shared history between the Polish community and the Ukrainian community and we can see the brave, brave people of Ukraine fighting for their freedom and fighting for their independence and you know uh, with this war there is only chance for us to support Ukraine. Ukraine has to win this war and it will win this war because there is no way it cannot otherwise it is the end of our free world as we know it right now. Um, so many countries are terrified of a Russian aggression spanning from Finland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. If you just have to look at the border of these countries that um, uh, have borders with, the, with, the, with Russia they are all terrified of an attack. This cannot go into a third world war situation. So everybody is so worried about this situation and that's why we are remembering those brave people who are fighting for our freedom and yours. In the Polish motto, za naszą i waszą wolność. Right. And as daughter of a Oh, a mother who longed for her homeland her whole life. I pray more than anything that our Ukrainian friends will be able to return. We'll be able to return to their precious land. Yes, nobody wants to leave their home. And Paddington, right. Wojtek, we know that um, nobody should have to leave their home. And those people who are staying in Ukraine have our prayers and absolute solidarity for their bravery to stay in their homes and face right. what, what many people could not face a russian aggressor right i'm thinking about our our both bears today katie and i thank you for that beautiful song and it will it stays with me i hum it all the time and um i hope our audiences will remember it and it will give them a smile yes we yeah. love you all for listening to these programs and subscribe to us and let us know we are also on spotify and so you are able to listen to us in your cars as well as watching us in person on youtube um thank you so much for joining us today we're wrapping up now so um, lovely to have you, uh, lovely Mary from New York City, and um, love from London Town. See you Thanks, soon. everyone. <laughs> Bye. See you soon. Take care, everyone. Slava Ukraini. Take care. Bye. Nikzia Polska.